This is the Antwi H10 and it's probably the best looking e-scooter that I've ever seen. The smooth lines of the magnesium alloy frame transition smoothly into the ambient lighting that makes the H10 really visible at night. Just what you need from a commuting e-scooter like this. So let's find out more about it. Now, I actually did the first impressions of this scooter back in November. And to be honest, my opinions haven't really changed that much since then. I still think it's a really nice commuter scooter. And at 15.8 kilograms, it's really easy to lug about. So first, let's see how easy it went together, and then we'll take a closer look. Compared to e-bikes, e-scooters are a breeze to put together, providing all the screws fit properly. All we had to do is connect some wires, plonk the handlebars on, and connect the brake. In the box is the manual, all the tools you'll need, <laughs> and the charger that charges it to full in about four hours. Now, one of the cool things about the scooter are the nine-inch tires. They're actually filled with a PU foam. That means they're more comfortable than the honeycomb style wheels that you can get on some e-scooters. Not quite as comfortable as Airfield, but not far off. But they have the added bonus that they'll never get a puncher. I have to say I love little e-scooters like this and I love big fast e-scooters. I'm not a huge fan of the ones that can't make their mind up and end up in that middle ground where they're too slow to be a fast Uber scooter but too bulky to be a suitable commuter scooter. This one is definitely right at home in the commuter segment. There's no suspension so it keeps the weight and size down so you can hide it under a desk with ease. I would have said I preferred it to the i9 and the Oovo Uktek V8 but the folding mechanism isn't the best. It involves messing with a really fiddly plastic hook. You kind of get used to using it so it's not a deal breaker but it's nowhere near as quick and easy to use as the system on the other two scooters. If you are going to work then you can just fold it up and plug it in under your desk. Now one not so cool thing about this scooter is the brakes. There's only one lever and that lever controls a front drum brake and a rear electronic brake but they're almost digital in that when you pull it, it's almost like they're on and off. You've almost got to treat it like you're on an electric skateboard. And remember that whenever you pull the brake, just lean back. And if you do that, you're absolutely fine. Mind you, they are good brakes though. 15 miles an hour. Not bad. And it's actually regenerative braking, so it should be able to charge the battery a little bit every time you use it. Now, that is really cool. The only problem is it's only got the one lever. And that means when you pull the lever, it controls both the drum and the regen brake at the back. It would have been nice to have two levers. And then when you're just going along normally, you could just, just use the regen brake and not use the drum. And then when there's like an emergency or something, then you can just pull both. The H10 has a decently sized deck with a grippy silicone mat, lots of reflectors, decent front and rear lights, the rear also being a brake light. It's got nice quality handlebar grips and of course a little bell. Ding ding. The computer is nice with a battery level and a speedo that are very visible. It's a monochrome LED but not the cool blue colour that it seems to look like on the website. Now you can use the computer to control a few settings, use the power button to turn the lights on and off, Use the M button to go through the speed settings. Long press the M button to choose trip computer or full Odo. But that's about it really. I did see a sneaky Bluetooth light there somewhere, but it doesn't seem to have an app. You can delve into the settings by holding down both buttons for three seconds, but there's nothing exciting in there. Actually there is, there's the speed limiter. So yeah, this is a 15.5 mile per hour e-scooter, which is the legal limit of these illegal scooters. However, if you go to the settings and change the speed limit to 70, it actually removes the top limit of the scooter. And then it goes 15.5 miles an hour. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. It always gives 15.5 miles an hour. That is the max speed of this scooter. So it's a very sensible scooter. So it's strictly for those people who want to break the law in a sensible way. Okay, that sounds like I'm being sarcastic and maybe that was a little bit intentional, but we all know that most authorities are okay with people on e-scooters providing they're being sensible. And this scooter is an extremely sensible option. Sensible because it's not too fast and sensible because the lights mean that you'll be seen. Even the motor size is sensible. In a world where e-scooter companies are inflating their figures, giving us peak values, trying to oversell, and we on the other hand are trying to undersell theirs, telling us it's only 300 watts. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's more than 300 watts, but in the hill climb test at Sandy Lane, it actually beat all of the other commuter style scooters. None of them made it up the hill, but not only did the Antwi H10 get further than both the iScooter i9 and the Uptech V8, which are both stated to be 350 watts, it 
also be the i9 max which is meant to be 500 watts so don't let the small motor numbers put you off now something that isn't so sensible is the position of the controls the computer is in the middle and the controls are on the computer which means if you're riding along and you need to change your speed setting you've got to take one hand off and then change it like that and i never recommend taking one hand off on an e-scooter but maybe they want you to. Maybe they thought the H10 was just so sensible they had to introduce an edgy aspect. Cue some cool shaky cam footage of a dude with Jordans, high rise flats in the distance. Here's some more footage for you, Antwi, and you can use that free of charge. There's drone footage of a kid with a 500 pounds e-scooter riding over a decaying concrete bridge, or the girls who are clearly androids because no one texts like that in real life. So let's fix it. To be fair, the scooter does look good. Not only will it suit the working commuter, the kids are gonna love it too. It's almost a fashion accessory as well as an extremely useful travel device. Pure vibes, and we call it. Pure vibes, pure vibes, pure vibes vibes in it it's by no means a perfect electric scooter there's no app support the 15.5 mile per hour max speed and the 15.5 mile range aren't the biggest it also doesn't have a zero start option you have to kick it away first and it has that annoying latch to keep it folded but everything it does well it does really well the motor is really strong for a little fella and the tires are great and it looks mm, chef's kiss pure vibes not gonna lie, it is what it is, yeah? So technically there are cheaper alternatives that are faster, that could go further and fold a little easier. So why would you actually pay the extra for the Antwi? Well, you're obviously paying for the looks. Let's face it, most of the other commuter scooters look exactly the same. You're paying for those puncture proof, but still fairly comfy tires. You're paying for that magnesium alloy frame that gives the scooter a proper quality feel. It feels really well made. At no point did it have any problem taking my 100 kilogram self around at full speed unlike some other scooters that really really struggle and it cannot be understated the way it beat the iScooter i9 the Uctec V8 and the i9 Max up Sandy Lane so with this scooter you are actually paying for the extra visibility and therefore extra safety on the road and you can't really put a price on that and I think with that we've actually hit the nail on the head because this scooter stands out from the crowd both in a visible safety way, but also in the fact that it doesn't look like a carbon copy of all those other e-scooters. But now I've given you the rundown, it's time to make your own mind up. If you can put up with the shortcomings for a little bit more style and safety, then I think you'll enjoy it. If you do want to check it out, I've put some links in the description. As always, if the video helped, do hit that thumbs up button. And if you like e-bike, e-scooter and e-skateboard content, then don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching until the end. If you want to see more of the Antwi, then click the link that's on the screen right now. But until next time, ride safe.